Hello, it's Chucky from C. Delano Photography, and I know it's been a while since I've done a Photoshop Elements tutorial, but today we're going to take a look at how to smooth skin and take off blemishes using a different technique that they use in the full version of Photoshop, which is called frequency separation. First, I want to give a little attribution to using Ewan McGregor's photo. If you go over here to Flickr under the Creative Commons licensing, right here S. Pochran has put that up as a Creative Commons license and I'm using that photo to be able to show you how to do the photo retouching. Let's go back to Photoshop Elements. As you can see here, I have a few different layers. If you don't see the layers palette, you can come over here and click on the very bottom where it says layers and make sure that you're in the expert mode. Well, I'm going to close this out and reopen it. Take you from the very beginning. Go to file, open, and we're going to open this photo. Now, I'm going to be using a few keyboard shortcuts. So if we go to the command or the control plus, that will zoom in for you. And as you can see, there's a little bit of blotching where you can see the little blood vessels in here. And then there are a few blemishes that we're going to clear up. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a couple layers. Now, if we go to layer and go to new, you can see it says layer via copy, control, or command J. So I'm going to make a copy of this. And then once again, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Command J to make another copy. We need to separate this into a high frequency and a low frequency. High frequencies are where the details and the textures reside, and the low frequencies are where the color resides. The very first thing that we're going to do with this is we're going to add a Gaussian blur. So if we go over here to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, it blurred out our photo and it is starting to cover up some of the blood vessels. But we don't want to lose that much detail in this, so I'm going to slide this radius over a little. And as you can see, just when we start to lose some of the texture on there, that's where we want to keep this, which is about 4.8. So I'm going to select OK right now. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to separate that texture from the color. And we're going to do this by using the invert function. So if you go to filter, adjust, and invert, you can see that that is a command or a control I that's going to invert our photo. We need to turn this into a grayscale so that we can shine all the textures through. And we're going to do that by going up here to the opacity and changing that to 50%, which is neutral gray, as you can see, and it leaves all the textures right there. We need to make two of these layers active. You can do that by holding the shift key down and clicking on this layer. The two blue layers are the active layers, and we're going to right click on these and we are going to merge these layers. We are going to change the blending mode so that you can see through this and we're going to change that to linear light. So we're going to do a command or control J once again and I'm going to turn off this visibility layer so that you can see what the original photo looks like. We're going to go to filter and since we already had that Gaussian blur we can either click this or hit the command or control F that will blur our photo up the same amount that we blurred in this top layer. I'm going to turn this layer off now. I'm going to go to our background layer and then I'm going to duplicate that layer one more time. Now for this one when we go up to filter and blur and Gaussian blur we want to blur this one out quite a bit until we stop seeing any of the detail at all. So I'm going to slide this radius on over as you can see, we're really starting to lose the detail right there and get to the point where you can almost just see the colors. That's about 10 pixels for me. You can see the colors, but you can't see much detail anymore. And we're going to select OK. Now this layer right here needs to go on top of this layer right here. So we're going to grab hold of this one and then drag it in between until the line turns real dark black and then we're going to let go. Now we need to add a mask to that. This is our little mask tool right there. 
and then we're going to do a command or control I to make that black. Adding the black to this layer mask right there just allows it to be see-through like it is not even there. We're going to paint back on that layer with white and I'll show you how to do that. Now we need to go to the very top one and turn that back on and then the very bottom one and turn that one back on. And as you can see, it looks like the original photo. If you want to see that, you can hold the Option or Alt key and hit the visibility layer. And I turn them all off and as you can see, that's the background. And when I turn them back all back on, it is the exact same photo. We're going to get rid of some of the uneven colors in here, and that is these blood vessels right there. Normally you want to try to take some of this stuff from the T-zone, as they say, and that is the forehead, and then a little bit uh, of the cheeks right in here. You can see that there's some discoloration right there, and maybe some of the chin. Now he does have a, a beard, like a one-day beard there that's growing, so we might just stick with the cheeks and the forehead. The next thing that we're going to do right here is use this layer and we're going to paint on it white wherever there is any kind of discoloration. Now we need to circle that discoloration with our lasso tool. So if you come over here on the left hand side you have the different selects right here and use this lasso tool right here. If you can't see this go down here into the tool options and select this one. Now we're going to draw on the actual forehead, the area that we want to clean up right in here. Now we need to add white to that, so that's going to smooth it out. And in order for, to make that happen, we need to make sure that the black is here and the white is here. If you have colors in here, you can hit the letter D on the keyboard and that will make the default colors white and black. And then the next thing you need to do is swap these colors around so that black is in the foreground. So if you click on this little double-headed arrow, it'll make black in the front and white in the back. In order to fill that with a white, we're going to use a keyboard shortcut, and that is Command-Delete or the Control Backspace. So I'm going to hit Command-Delete. That is going to fill that with white. And as you can see, it kind of smoothed out all that color without us losing any of our uh, texture. So in order to get rid of the marching ants, we hit the command or control D, and as you can see, it really smoothed up all those colors right in here. Now I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to grab all this right here, and then I'm going to hit command delete or control backspace, and as you can see, it created a nice smooth area right there where it's not discolored. So hit Command or Control D to get rid of the marching ants. So keep doing that until all the areas are nice and controlled as far as the colors. Uh, if you want to see one last one on the cheek, I'm not going to bore you with all this, but if you circle this cheek area right here and then fill that with the white and then hit Command D, you can see right here it's cleaned up all those cheek colors right there. Now in order to get rid of some of these blemishes we need to go to the texture layer which is this one right here. If you want to rename this you can right click here and go to rename layer and type in texture. If you want to rename this one right here we can right click and rename this layer smooth or color or something like that. But we're going to make the texture layer active by clicking on it. You can see that it is blue right here, so it is active. A quick shortcut if you want to move this picture around while you're in a tool, you can hold the space bar down and you can move this around. But we're going to find some blemishes and we're going to use the clone stamp tool right here. And we want to make sure that we definitely are on the texture right here. And then we're going to pick an area that's close to the area that we want to clean up. So I'm going to put the cursor right here and hold down the Alt or Option key. It's going to give us a little target. I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to move it over right here and then I'm going to clean that up right there. And we're just going to keep doing that, Alt or Option, and then I'm going to click on that. And as you can see, I'm removing all these different areas of blemishes. And we move this and clean up all those different blemishes. Some on the nose area right here, we can do the option and I can clean this area up 
right in there. So this is a great way of being able to clean up our portraits without making it look false where it doesn't have any kind of texture or anything. I hope you enjoyed that quick tutorial on cleaning up portraits with the frequency separation. I know that there's a lot of people that have the Photoshop tutorials out there on this, but this is a way to do it in Photoshop Elements. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you in my next video.